Namaskar. Democracy is not only about elections, it's about a relationship between citizens and its government, and the right to choose and assess the performance of government, about leaders and issues, about the pace of development and the work and progress of creating jobs, growth, and a secure, to secure a better life for people. Well, the process is ongoing, but it's tested at the time of an election. And elections are about politics, winning and winnability, about political forces ranged against each other on an electoral battlefield. And the elections to the four states of Assam, West Bengal, Kerala, Tamil Nadu, and the Union Territory of Puducherry between April 4th and May 16th provide distinct, varied battlefields where political opponents in one state may be allies in another, and where the issues may be local or national. Now, these elections are defining in that the incumbent governments in Assam and Kerala are struggling to defend their track record. Some older parties in West Bengal are struggling to be relevant. And while some parties lose relevance and cede space, a new political landscape is being created, one in which the BJP, for one, may be making gains. Or the smaller parties in Tamil Nadu could be looking at the post Karunanidhi Jaya Lalita era. We look at the big picture. I'm Mark Lynn, and to help us understand what's at stake in these elections, we have senior consulting editor of DD News, KG Suresh, and political editor of the Deccan Herald, Shekhar Ayer. And on the field, we have our correspondents from Gauhati, Sevali Kalita, from Kolkata, Ani Brato, and down south, Aisha Khanna. Well, uh, let's begin by asking our guests, first of all, what the overall picture is. Uh, you know, we'll start with you, uh, Mr. Shekhar. The poll arithmetic in Bihar seemed to have won the day, even though the, you know, the, the vote share of the political parties seemed to have remained very much there. So it was all poll arithmetic that did the show. If we look at that kind of lesson from the previous election, the assembly election, what are we looking at in these elections here? So we are looking for change, mm -hmm. essentially because in Assam you have had one party, one government, one CM for the last 15 years. And in Bengal, it's a different story. You have some new permutations and combinations taking place just to displace a factor called Mabhuta Banerjee. Similarly, in Tamil Nadu, as you just mentioned about aggregate of uh, votes and uh, mm. It's a big effort was on uh, till the other day whether there could be a, a grand alliance against uh, Jailalitha, okay. who is again, like Mamata, is a factor by itself. More than a party, she's a, right. it's a Jailalitha. Now in Kerala, it's again very interesting this time because Kerala has never had a situation where any party which has been in power for five years gets a chance again. Mm -hmm. And there you have uh, the leftists and perhaps the one good state where the left feels a little confident and a little hopeful that you know they can uh, you know get a chance again sure so mr suresh how do you view the political formations at the start of these elections well i think that uh, you see at the we have three national uh, groupings uh, particularly two groupings which have very high stakes for the congress it's a battle of you know somehow retaining two of the you know major states it has right. currently because already you know it only has control over a handful of states so for it it is a battle of survival so far as the left is concerned well they, they have a battle of survival in the national politics itself they have already been reduced uh, you to the margins right. in the last Lok Sabha elections and Tripura is the only state where they have some stake yes in Bengal and Kerala uh, they are trying to come make a comeback but in Bengal it seems a rather uphill task okay. whereas in Kerala also because of a third player and that is the BJP there is every possibility that their you know resurgence yes. or revival mm -hmm. may be dented again very importantly you see there is no anti-incumbency as such in Assam uh, I mean, uh, in Bengal or Bengal, uh, it's Kerala. Too soon. Yeah. Huh? It's just uh, one term for Bengal. Yeah, or right. Tamil Nadu. Yeah. Bengal or Tamil Nadu. Whereas, uh, in Kerala, there, there has been this rotational process. Sure. Wherein, you know, either the LDF or the UDF comes to power right. alternatively. This time around, 
you have a third flair and last but not the least the bjp is in a win win situation yes you see it was it was always considered a north india centric party okay and now we have a situation where it is the main contender for power in a northeast state that is assam okay. and is also knocking at the doors in kerala uh, it is expected to make a debut in the kerala assembly in the coming elections okay let's uh, go across to assam now and let's try and understand what's happening there the legislative assembly elections for 126 seats will be held in two phases April 4th and April 11th. The Congress party has been in the saddle for 15 years. Does it have enough to sustain its rule or will it face anti-incumbency? Here's an overview. The Congress has remained at the helm of affairs for almost 15 years in Assam, where Chief Minister Torun Gogoi had come to power in 2001. However, in 2016, the Congress is confronted with various challenges following the defeat in the Lok Sabha polls. In the 2014 Lok Sabha elections, the BJP had won seven of the 14 parliamentary seats with 35% votes, while the Congress managed to win only three seats with 29% votes. Three-time Chief Minister Torun Gogoi will lead the Congress party's political campaign in these polls while Sarbananda Sonowal, who has been declared as BJP's chief ministerial candidate, will be spearheading the party's political campaign there. In the year 2015, the political landscape in the state took an interesting turn when Himanta Bishra Sharma, once Assam Chief Minister Torun Gogoi's close confidant, quit the Congress and joined the BJP. Himanta's joining the BJP had sent shivers down the ranks of the ruling Congress. Recently, the BJP entered into an alliance with Assam Gana Parishad and the Boroland People's Front. The alliance is expected to cash in on the anti-incumbency factor against the Congress government. On the other hand, Assam's main opposition party, the All India United Democratic Front, led by perfume king Badruddin Ajmal, commands considerable support among the state's Muslims. AIUDF had won three seats with 14% of a vote share in the 2014 Lok Sabha elections. Muslim voters, who now constitute almost 34% of Assam's population, can play an important role in deciding the fate of candidates at least in 33 seats. Besides, there are some other factors which cannot be ignored. On one hand, if protecting the identity of the Assami society has remained a political agenda in the state, on the other, the successful integration with other communities is also a challenge for political parties. Above all, the D-voter issue stands out among other top issues. D-voter or doubtful voter is a category of voters in Assam who are disenfranchised by the government on account of their alleged lack of proper citizenship credentials. However, in its recent order, the Supreme Court has said that D-voters who can prove their citizenship before the election officers can take part in the elections. Presently, there are 1,37,000 D-voters of Bengali-speaking origin. Earlier, in 1997, the Election Commission had issued a circular to remove non-citizens from the electoral list. The persons who could not provide evidence in favour of the Indian nationality were marked with D in the electoral rolls. The persons marked as D voters were barred from contesting the elections and casting their votes. Analysts believe that the D factor may affect the fate of candidates at least on 24 seats. Besides these categories, political parties will also be making all-out efforts to woo indigenous Boro tribals tea garden laborers and employees to tip the scale in their favor to reach the majority mark of 64 in the 126 seat assembly election desk dd news well let's uh, go across now to our correspondent uh, sevati kalita who's joining us from gauhati well uh, sevati uh, when one looks uh, it's a 15 year rule of uh, Tarun Gogoi, and uh, obviously when we look at development or pace of development, there must be some sort of feeling of maybe anti-incumbency, it must be catching up. Uh, how is that being viewed on the ground? Uh, see, uh, this time the election assembly uh, poll of uh, Assam is a little bit tough. Uh, now, BJP in the grassroots level, they are also coming out and uh, with the alliance of ACP and uh, um, Borough, Borough People's Front. So this time Congress government are uh, showing that they have uh, gone through the development and other opposition are saying that they do not have any development. But on the other hand, education and health uh, division are also uh, under the development process. But think is that the different issues are coming out with the different parties and different political areas and with the people. Right, uh, Sevati also, uh 35% uh, of the population is Muslim and uh, you know one of the big issues is illegal immigration and that's been a huge issue in Assam. 
and uh, now there is also the factor of doubtful voters. Uh, how is this being viewed? Uh, uh, by uh, AZP, they have the uh, most demand, most, uh, most, most, most of the time they are thinking that the day voters and uh, illegal migrants from the Bangladesh are the main problems for Assam. And our youths, like uh, um, all Assam Students Union and uh, Zuba Satra Poria, they are also thinking that these are the biggest thing uh, for the Assam. And uh, uh, they have an accord in 1985 with uh, Rajiv Gandhi, uh, former prime minister, but there is also nothing happened with that accord. So this time, BJP is. Uh, promising people that uh, illegal uh, migrants will be uh, out from the Assam and people are also supporting for that. Right. Thanks very much, uh, Sevati, for joining us uh, from Gauhati. Uh, well, uh, Mr. Shekhar Ayer, um, Assam, 15-year rule of Tarun Gogoi. Uh, uh, obviously, the forces are building up against him. And uh, how would we look at the alliance of the BJP with the AGP and the Bodo Front? See, uh, this time, uh, the issues, if you look at the issues in Assam against which the Congress government is confronted with this, one is huge unemployment, lack of opportunities for the youth, and also the problems of people living in tea plantations, mm -hmm. and the plight of the tribals, you know, they, they are there in more than 35 constituencies, and they are listed as OBC in Assam. Okay. And this time you find uh, parties are trying to promise them a scheduled uh, tribe status, right. which is going to uh, you know affect the way the these 35 seats where people who work in the tea gardens who consider themselves to be scheduled are the tribes, but tribes. their status is of an OBC. That's one mm -hmm. big factor. Okay. Now in in the in the Brahmaputra Valley or in the main uh, SMSA, there the issues are. As you mentioned, the concern of this influx. Influx has been an issue for more than three decades. That's right. Now the question of people, essentially what has happened is, Assam has got into a kind of a plateau where people, particularly the youth, feel lack of opportunities. Right. When the state itself has a huge potential. Okay. And the time has come for what the voters would want is somebody who is there out to promise, somebody who is out to give them the new hope. Okay. And we have seen in the in the last five years particularly, Taran Goy government has faced one scandal after the another, mm -hmm. one scam after the another. There has been several issues. Sure. And the, the fact that, you know, this alliance, there is a formidable alliance, the fact that BJP plus AGP, which mm -hmm. has been essentially done to prevent splitting in any anti-Congress uh, votes. Okay. So, uh, Mr. Suresh, uh, if we look at uh, leadership as well, now uh, Mr. Sarbanan Sonabal is the chief ministerial candidate. He was with the AGP until yeah. 2011. Uh, he's been a minister with the union government. Uh, he was the skill development minister, also holding additional charge as the sports minister. And uh, the issue of youth, uh, important, as uh, Mr. Shekharaya was pointing out. How would we look at the leadership factor and how it would go down with the voters? Well, you see, 15 years, if you look at, uh, say, when we had Mr. Lalu Prasad's regime in Bihar, 15 years, uh, you know, ended up as the Waterloo. The same was the case with uh, Sheila Dixit in uh, Delhi. So 15 years is a, you know, very milestone kind of a period. But this apart, uh, the f very fact that 15 years in itself creates a kind of anti-incumbency, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but having said that, uh, it is not that, you know, apart from the anti there are a lot of factors, positive and negative on both sides. And uh, uh, it remains to be seen. For example, even the al while the alliance has been worked out, uh, even for BJP and uh, uh, AGP, uh, again there has been a further split in the AGP, uh, you know, uh, and again uh, one faction of Bodo's have gone with the Congress. Uh, again, uh, another important factor is that you see, with the AGP coming uh, with the BJP, there is a section of the uh, Bengali Hindu migrants mm -hmm. uh, because the AGP has always opposed them. 
okay. uh, you know, uh, any kind of migration. It was not just uh, Bangladeshi Muslim migration, but they have opposed all kinds of migration right. to Assam. Uh, how will they react? Do they have been hardcore supporters of the BJP? Uh, you know, uh, so that also I is a factor. Okay. But I think that uh, uh, we also need to uh, watch out for uh, you know Badruddin Ajmal. Okay. Uh, he is claiming that he will be the kingmaker, and uh, no government would be able uh, would be they would be able to form without his support. That is the kind of confidence he exudes, and okay. he has really grown up over the years. And please remember, of the 35, 34 to 35 percent Muslims in Assam, almost 32 percent are uh, Bangladeshi immigrants. Only you have the native uh, SMEs Muslims who are a minority 2 to 3 percent. Okay. Uh, so that is a very important factor that needs to be taken into account. But certainly, again, the Supreme Court order on the, you know, uh, the disputed, uh, you know, the voters, DV, right. uh, that again is certainly going to not benefit uh, the opposition, but the uh, ruling uh, alliance. Okay. Uh, but having said that, anti-incumbency, corruption, as Shekhar put it, these are certainly going to, you know, uh, Gogoi is an old war horse. Uh, he is sure. going to, you know, and Congress leadership is also going to put all its because they want to, because they are trying to project, though it is a very uh, assembly mm -hmm. election with local issues, but yes. somewhere there is an attempt to project as if it is Gogoi versus Modi. Right. You know, uh, I mean, uh, how can the Prime Minister be, right. you know, compared? But I think that uh, this is a very important election in the sense that for the BJP, okay. uh, you know, and for Mr. Amit Shah, who has again been re elected, mm -hmm. I think that uh, uh, any victory in Assam is going to be a very major, you know, morale booster uh, because it would be their foray into the Northeast for the first time. I mean, they have been in power in certain smaller states right. uh, as a coalition partner. Sure. But as a lead partner, uh, I okay. think that uh, we have to wait, but uh, the, uh, very interesting elections, I must uh, say. Uh, but Mr. Ayer, uh, the Congress split. I mean, a lot of the big men uh, went over to the BJP, Hemant Abiswa. Uh, how does that? I mean, uh, how does that strengthen the BJP alliance? See, what has happened is Congress has been faced this. Uh, the and we saw that in the 2014 Lok Sabha yeah, elections, we saw, saw the BJP they, they, doing BJP extremely well. Seven, seven seats, yes. 40 Lok Sabha seats. So they have to keep that momentum yeah, up. Do and, they have and, that in there? And in the last two years, Congress has not done anything mm -hmm. to improve its image or uh, to present some kind of a, uh, a revived face. The fact that they could not do anything to displace right. Darun Kogui. Sure. And, and final call was that they will go to the elections with Darun Kogui. That itself is a big challenge. Okay. And Hemant Bishwa is being virtually number two in the party and he has come over to the BJP side, which means the Congress has is virtually, it, it's the Tarun Kogui faction of the Congress which is facing. It's not a united Congress. Okay. So that itself is, I think, a big plus point for the the challenges and a big minus for the Congress. Okay. Uh, but one sincerely sure. hopes that you know there is no hung assembly because only in that event you can have you can have players like uh, Ajmal uh, you know playing no, a that very is what critical role only in the event of a hung assembly. Okay, fair uh, enough. We need to move on and uh, let's go across to uh, West Bengal now and that's uh, going to polls in six phases actually in seven days and it begins on the fourth fourth of April. Different political equations and dynamics are at work here. And will the Congress Left Alliance be able to oust Mamta Banerjee in the elections the way the Congress TMC Alliance had ended the 34 year rule of the left parties? Let's take a look. The battleground for assembly elections 2016 has almost been set in West Bengal, where different political equations and dynamics are at work. West Bengal Chief Minister Mamata Banerjee had contested the 2011 Assembly polls on a catchy slogan, Ma, Marty and Manush, or Mother, Land and People, thereby ending the 34-year rule of left parties in West Bengal. In 2011, Trinamool Congress had won a majority of 184 seats out of 294 seats in the Assembly, while the Left Front had won 62 seats and the Congress had bagged 42 seats. However, in 2016, Trinamool Congress is confronted with several challenges. The issues that still need to be answered include law and order situation in the state, the ruling party's misuse of police department for personal political gains, the issue of illegal infiltration from the neighboring country and violence in Malda. 
Besides, the TMC government is also facing the question of providing employment to youth. Unlike 2011, when Congress had joined hands with Mamata Banerjee to oust the left front from West Bengal, this time around, the Congress and CPM have entered into an alliance to dethrone Didi from the Writers' Building in Kolkata. As the head of CPM, Sitaram Yachuri faces the test of a pragmatic politics to regain the lost ground for the party. On the other hand, BJP too is making a determined effort to make its growing presence felt. The party has signalled its arrival by its performance in the 2014 Lok Sabha polls. Election Desk, DD News. And for more on the election mood in uh, Kolkata, is joining us uh, from there is Ani Brato. Well, uh, Ani Brato, uh, you know, one thing about West Bengal elections is that uh, there is a lot of violence. And uh, that's probably one of the reasons why it has uh, six phases and uh, probably one could say seven phases because the first phase is two days. Uh, you know, how are political parties viewing this long, drawn-out election? Yeah, as you know, Mark, uh, as you have rightly said, that the West Bengal is a history of violence uh, during uh, election time. I know the violence marred the election scenario as you have witnessed in the last uh, municipal election had taken place there. So uh, cogent measures have been taken by the election commission this time to ensure free and fair poll. What you have asked of the political parties, political parties are vying different possibilities this time because, you know, uh, after 34 years of left rule, five years, Trinamool Congress rule is unmatched. But, you know, once an arch rival uh, 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 Congress and CPI, buying the possibility of an alliance. Uh, actually, they are, uh, they are narrowing down their differences, and at present, they are uh, saying that uh, they have uh, made, uh, made a consensus of almost 95% of the seats. Only 5% is left out, and uh, they, they are trying to whittle out this difference uh, this time. Uh, but uh, they, they are trying to ensure one-to-one -one fight. Uh, okay. uh, barring, um, uh, you know, uh, BJP, uh, there is a broad consensus of the uh, of the of the opposition parties uh, to uh, against the against Trinamool Congress. Uh, uh, but you know what it will take place is yet to see because uh, because mindset of the Bengal people is that they want to give time to the uh, to the political party in power. Uh, okay. So, uh, uh, Ani, brother, know, let me stop you there because uh, let's uh, because look at the election also and uh, I'm looking at it from the long drawn out uh, election, five, five, six phases. Also campaigning would be interesting as a result of that. It would be a longer drawn out campaign. And uh, if we look at, uh, you know, some of the star campaigners and how they are going to be campaigning in the state, could you give us an idea? Yeah. Yeah, who can be otherwise but the Prime Minister, you know, Mark, because Prime Minister who will hold uh, nine uh, meetings in Bengal, uh, nine uh, rally, you know, public public meeting. The first meeting will take place on the 24th of this month. It will be followed by other meeting, you know. Uh, Prime Minister holds seven meeting in the next month and one in, in the month of uh, May. So uh, there are other political big weeks in, uh, in different political parties, uh, starting from BJP, uh, because, you know, uh, uh, Amit Shah, BJP president, will also hold the same sort of rally, at least 10 rally he will hold here in Bengal. And thereafter, Rajnath Singh, you know, Sushma Swaraj, and uh, many other high uh, big weeks of uh, BJP will, uh, will campaign here. And not only that, you know, not if the, the campaign doesn't end with the BJP, but at the same time, uh, the, uh, Rahul Gandhi and Sonia Gandhi okay. will also hit the list, you know, and uh, and uh, from uh, from left uh, scenario, we see that the uh, several uh, uh, several left leaders will also campaign here in Bengal. So, right. uh, you know, electrifying mood is prevailing here at this people scenario in Bengal right at this time, Mark. Thank you very much, Ani Brato, for joining us uh, from Kolkata. Uh, well, Mr. Suresh, uh, you were saying in your opening comments that you know uh, one quite can't look at this uh, as anti-incumbency in. Uh, West Bengal because, uh, well, I mean, when we look at 30-plus uh, years of the left rule, then this this government has only had just five mm -hmm. years. So, I mean, it, and Ani Brato seems to suggest that, you know, they want to give things a little longer haul. But uh, political formations are working against the government, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, and the, uh, polar arithmetic comes into play here. Yes. You see, the uh, situation is that, you know, we have this saying that, you know, politics makes strange bedfellows, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, it, could not be stranger than what we are seeing in Bengal today, you know. Right. Uh, despite the fact that, you know, in Kerala there are, uh, you know, bitter foes 
the left and the Congress have come together with the Budhadev Bhattacharya, the former Chief Minister, making a desperate appeal, uh, you know, to the uh, congressmen to come and join forces. And it, it's a farce that's happening there, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, because uh, they are both are in a way fighting for survival okay. uh, 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 because they just want to because they know that it's very difficult given the current situation uh, left doesn't have a credible uh, face to okay. project as an alternative to Mamta Banerjee uh, and as you rightly put it even now uh, the, uh, the common perception is that maybe she hasn't been given enough time uh, there is of course uh, there are serious charges uh, particularly you know the Ponzi scam that's uh, right is Sarda a, scam, Sarda scam mm -hmm. has come as a big big uh, you know bolt uh, blot on uh, the entire uh, regime plus mm, you see what has happened in Malda uh, the, the recent you know, violence the there, yes. violence against women uh, you know these have been issues but there you see uh, uh, unfortunately political violence has always dominated Bengal elections and uh, um, uh, it's uh, unfortunate for the people of Bengal that 35 years during the left rule, uh, you know, all the anti-social elements you know, which had joined ranks with the then regime have now shifted lock, stock and barrel and have joined the new regime. And they are now perpetrating the, and, and uh, okay. for a change, the communists and the Congress uh, fellows uh, uh, and even some BJP fellows are at the receiving end now. Okay. now BJP is certainly, uh, uh, particularly after the polarization in many places, you know, because of the uh, governments, uh, you know, apparently, you see, uh, West so Bengal BJP has about two seats 20, in uh, 2014. Yeah, uh, you know, and West Bengal has 17% yes, of the vote yes, as well. West Bengal has a, a sizable section of the Muslim population, and certainly uh, Mamta Banerjee has been trying to woo the minorities to a great extent. And in that process, maybe somewhere, you know, uh, that uh, that what BJP calls appeasement, okay. that has certainly, you know, enabled it to uh, woo a sizable section of the, and not only that, even people from the left, mm -hmm. you know, sympathizers of the left, who uh, who do not uh, uh, feel comfortable with Mamta Banerjee, they have also shifted loyalties to the BJP. But how far it translates into seats is something that needs to be seen. But yes, uh, both uh, BJP and in fact uh, uh, Congress and uh, the the CPM yes. in fact they are so scared now that they feel that even a friendly fight you know in certain constituency which seems inevitable okay. because they have already announced you know candidates yes. even that would benefit the Trinamool that is a kind of fear that uh, they are you know currently uh, right. that is why they are looking at even people like Kanaya Kumar to go <laughs> campaign for them. Uh, yeah. How do you view the, all this uh, Mr. Shekhar Ayer because uh, when we look at uh, this existential problem that these parties are facing there, uh, when they calculate their poll share, they believe that they have about equal poll share to what uh, Mamta Banerjee has, which is about 39%. Uh, but maybe Mamta Banerjee could gain. And then the BJP has 17% uh, and it's growing. And uh, they've got a new face now. Uh, in the, uh, uh, the the Bose story also has come to the play. Uh, how, 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 is, how do you view this? How do you view all this? No, you see, for the BJP, uh, it's about opening a good presence in Bengal and essentially preparing the stage for the 2019 elections because mm -hmm. Bengal has got 42 Lok Sabha seats. That's right. So how the BJP performs this time, we should be watched in the context, how it prepares even the fact that the Prime Minister himself would be leading the campaign. I see it, as far as the BJP is concerned, is a run-up to 2019 mm -hmm. where BJP is definitely looking beyond its uh, traditional base and to, uh, just as we talked about Assam, Bengal right. is one place. Now, as far as the left uh, Congress alliance, now I think we need to keep in mind this is something that is disturbing Mamata because her support base is not evenly spread out all over Bengal. Right. Even though in terms of uh, uh, seat share, it is huge. Even mm -hmm. in the Lok Sabha elections, if you go by the last Lok Sabha elections, she was uh, reigning supreme in more than 200 of the 294 seats. Now, in North Bengal particularly, where this alliance can make an impact, in the sense left and Congress coming together could affect the number of seats she is hoping to gain in North Bengal. Okay. Therefore, in North Bengal, it will have some impact, but in South Bengal still remains her bastion. All right. It's a very large uh, state, uh, Mr. Suresh, 294 seats are pretty difficult to, uh, you know, predict the fortunes of 294 seats, but uh, do you feel that the political formations are pretty uh, watertight in a sense? I oh. mean, in the sense that we can uh, go ahead and say that uh, 
you you were saying also that uh, maybe mamta has the advantage no but uh, please remember uh, you know uh, there is a disillusionment also uh, uh, mm -hmm. both in uh, within the congress and uh, left ranks already the cpi ml faction and the suci uh, have already walked out of the alliance you know the okay. left uh, front alliance because uh, they feel that you know that compatibility is not there at the end of the day uh, that compatibility is not there and somewhere the contradictions are coming to the fore uh, but still as i said it is a battle for survival and the, the, the whole objective was to put up a grand alliance you know the kind okay. of which we saw in uh, bengal uh, in bihar mm -hmm. uh, but uh, somehow uh, in the absence of a a very credible phase okay. you know uh, i think that they are unable to you know put that united face together and certainly uh, it is not going to be a cake walk for uh, mamta uh, but at the same time she is trying to expose this uh, you know this uh, double standards okay. of having an alliance in bengal in fact she has gone to the extent of saying that i will go to kerala and campaign you know so i think that this is also very relevant okay uh, let's take a short uh, commercial break at this point of time you're watching janadesh uh, we are looking at the overview of the four states and the one union territory election in the next two months <laughs> चांदी का चौके ये का सेतु है मरीना का बीच है ये ये आजाद का मैदान है ए, खड़े सिंह का मार्ग है चित्रंजन का एवेन्यू है ये अन्ना का नगर यही है गंगा की है ये नदी ये लक्ष्मी की कॉलोनी है बंकिम का स्ट्रीट है ये हरिमन का पॉइंट है ये और मैं तुम्हें इसे गंदा नहीं करने दूंगा यहाँ कचरा नहीं फेंकने दूंगी पान नहीं छुपने दूंगा ये लेकर छिलका नहीं फेंकने दूंगी अगर एक बार सवा सौ करोड़ देशवासी तय कर ले कि मैं गंदगी नहीं करूंगा तो दुनिया की कोई ताकत नहीं है जो हिंदुस्तान को गंदा कर सके स्वच्छ भारत एक कदम स्वच्छता की ओर अस्पताल में गंदगी हो सकती है कुछ छूना मत और बीमार पड़ जाओगी अरे दीदी अब सब बदल रहा है इतनी साफ सफाई जी हम सब ने मेहनत की है ताकि आपके इलाज में कोई कमी ना आए बदल रहा है बदल रहे हैं स्वास्थ्य केंद्र अब स्वच्छ हो रहे हैं और ये आपके ब्लॉक में भी संभव है बस पहल करनी पड़ेगी हमको और आपको भी स्वच्छता का संकल्प करे स्वास्थ्य केंद्र का कायाकल्प मैं अमिताभ बच्चन आज आपके सामने वो कहने जा रहा हूं जो मैंने पहले कभी नहीं कहा मैं एक रोगी हेपेटाइटिस बी का रोगी उन्नीस में कुली फिल्म की शूटिंग के दौरान मेरे साथ एक दुर्घटना हुई ऑपरेशन करवाना पड़ा और मेरे शरीर में 60 बोतल खून चढ़ा गया खून का कोई एक सैंपल हेपेटाइटिस बी इन्फेक्टेड था जो मेरे लिवर तक पहुंच गया कई सालों बाद आम जांच के दौरान जब इसका पता चला तो मुझे यह भी पता चला कि मेरा एक चौथाई लिवर ही बचा हुआ लेकिन सही इलाज के बाद आज मैं आपके सामने खड़ा हूं और काम कर रहा हूं हेपेटाइटिस बी से बचने का पहला उपाय है शिशु के जन्म पर पहला टीका लगवाए और पहले साल में तीन और नियमित टीके लगवाए ये आपका पहला कदम होना चाहिए मुफ्त टीकाकरण के लिए अपने पास के स्वास्थ्य केंद्र जाए और पूरी जानकारी लें देखिए ये जो हेपेटाइटिस बी है इससे हम डरेंगे नहीं लड़ेंगे सत्तर के दशक से पूर्व भारत को दूसरे देशों से खाद्यान्न का आयात करना पड़ता था परंतु हरित क्रांति के पश्चात इस देश में अन्न की पैदावार इतनी बढ़ गई कि न केवल वो हमारे लिए पर्याप्त था वरन उसका निर्यात भी होने लगा पर इसका मतलब ये नहीं है कि हम खाद्यान्न की इस तरह बर्बादी करें भगवान श्री कृष्ण ने हांडी में बचे हुए एक दाने ऐसी भोजन करके ये संदेश दिया की अन्न का आदर करो अन्न का अनादर ईश्वर का अनादर है अन्न का सम्मान हो ये हमारी संस्कृति है Welcome back and let's turn our attention now to uh, we'll go down south and the assembly elections in Kerala it will be held on the 16th of May the state has been a bipolar contest it's been seeing that between the two major blocks that's the incumbent UDF and the LDF 
Now, have they ceded sufficient space to end this bipolar kind of politics? Let's look at this report. Following the announcement of election dates for polls in four states and one union territory, political activities have geared up for the 140 assembly seats in Kerala. The 2.56 crore voters will decide the fate of many stalwarts on May 16 polls. So far, people in Kerala have seen direct fight between two fronts, Congress-led UDF and CPIM headed by LDF. However, in 2016, BJP has emerged as the third option for assembly polls in the state. Currently, the UDF is the ruling coalition having won 72 seats in the 2011 assembly elections. In 2016, Kerala Chief Minister Oman Chandi is facing various challenges. He is facing criticism over government liquor policy resulting in shutting down of over 700 liquor bars attached to hotels below the five-star categories. The new liquor policy has led to loss in tourism sector and put at stake job of hundreds of hotel employees and has also led to loss of revenue for the government. Besides former Finance Minister K.M. Mani, whose party Kerala Congress M is an ally of the UTF, is facing serious corruption charges in bar bribery case. He is alleged to have received money from bar owners to renew bar licenses in Kerala. On the other hand, the CPIM leaders and former chief ministers V.S. Achutanandan and his rival Pinarai Vijayan are said to be at loggerheads, causing a lot of unpleasant situations for the party. According to analysts, their rivalries may benefit BJP in assembly polls. Unlike in the other states, minorities form a significant number in Kerala and have traditionally backed UDF. The Indian Union Muslim League, IUML, has remained an important partner for Congress-led UDF for several years. On the other hand, a large number of people from majority community have been voting for Left Democratic Front, LDF. Traditionally, majority of Ezhawas uh, have backed LDF for years. BJP has recently sued up an alliance with Bharat Dharma Janasena, a party formed by Sri Narayan Dharma Paripalana Yogam, a powerful organization of the backward Ezhawa community. The alliance may hurt LDF in assembly polls. Moreover, the BJP's claim to power is further determined by its success in recently held civic polls in the state. BJP improved its tally in village, block and district panchayats as well as municipalities and corporations in the Kerala local body elections. It increased its vote share from 12% in 2010 to 18% for local self-government institutions. The fate of several stalwarts like Congress Party's Oman Chandi, CPIM leader V.S. Achudanandan, BJP's Kerala unit president Kumanam Rajasekharan will be decided in the upcoming polls. Like Assam, much is at stake for Congress in Kerala to retain power. Now all eyes are on May 19 when the results will be declared to decide who forms the next government in Thiruvananthapuram. Election Desk, DD News. And for more on this, uh, let's go across to Aisha Khanam, who's uh, covering all these states for us in the south. Uh, Aisha, tell us, uh, first of all, uh, you know, apart from the LDF and the UDF, uh, what are the kind of political formations we are seeing in Kerala? Uh, well, Mark, uh, people in Kerala are now uh, looking forward to a change. And uh, Kerala, which was known for hartals uh, once upon a time, uh, people here are now looking uh, uh, for moving away from hartals to development. So therefore, there is a lot of scope uh, for a third front to emerge in Kerala as such, which is where the BJP is uh, trying uh, to gain its foothold in uh, Kerala along with the BDJS. But the smaller parties, uh, uh, which were earlier aligned to UDF and uh, LDF, are now realigning. Uh, because of the corruption charges, because of the uh, sleaze that has accompanied these uh, corruption charges uh, uh, on uh, uh, the UDF government. So there are a lot of uh, uh, realignment of uh, the smaller parties uh, which have always led to the win of either one of the major blocs, either it is UDF or LDF. So they, these smaller parties will be the game changer, will uh, decide uh, the fortunes uh, of uh, uh, LDF or UDF in uh, the forthcoming elections. But for the people, it is the change that they are looking forward to. As I said, uh, uh, majority of the population uh, uh, of uh, Kerala is living right. outside the state. They have uh, they have left the state in search of employment, in search yes. of uh, better opportunities. Uh, so therefore, they now feel that if they are promised a change, if they are promised uh, investments in the state, if they are promised jobs in their own state, they can come back. So they okay. have. Uh, so they are now looking forward uh, to uh, uh, a new change. Uh, uh, as I said, uh, the BJP right, and the B, uh, B, uh, uh, BDJs is uh, promising uh, to. Uh, provide them in, 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 uh, through this uh, forthcoming elections. Right. Uh, Mr. Suresh, uh, 
What Aisha says uh, is true. I mean, most of the people uh, and much of the economy of Kerala is actually run by uh, NRIs, uh, of the people who go out and come back. Mm -hmm. and, so uh, almost 25 percent of the population so is outside of the state. And uh, they, they are changing their views. I mean, they may be not be looking, uh, you know, at these uh, the, the old formations any longer because they have gone out and seen a, a different system of, uh, of life. Uh, how important is that? How would you view that? In, in, uh, to, is, is this the end of bipolar politics in uh, Kerala to some extent? Well, I think that it's early days. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 the principal opponents would always remain at least uh, in this election. You know, the LDF and the UDF. BJP is certainly going to be, uh, if not a kingmaker, they are going to be certainly playing a spoil spot for both of them. Uh, and uh, to that extent, we have to see what is the kind of impact that they are going to make. Okay. Uh, you see, uh, the interesting thing is that uh, it is the mem mem Politburo members from Kerala who vehemently opposed any alliance uh, between the left and the Congress uh, in Bengal. Uh, they said that uh, we will be thoroughly exposed right. if it happens. Uh, you know, but the left has its own internal contradictions in Kerala, as mentioned in the report. You see, last time, if they had actually, you know, projected V. S. Achutanandan as the chief ministerial candidate, maybe you know they would have won the uh, state for the second time, right. for the second consecutive time. Uh, in Kerala, it has always been rotational. You know, uh, first right. LDF comes, then the UDF, then LDF. But last the time, the UDF came with a wafer thin majority. Wafer thin yes. majority, uh, and this time around, again. All attempts were made by the Pinarai group to ensure that VS doesn't get a ticket. And there had to be a central, uh, you know, Politburo intervention to ensure that he also got a ticket. But they also don't have, uh, at the end of the day, apart from Pinarai and this 92-year-old, uh, you yeah, know, uh, uh, gentleman, uh, they don't have a, a new face to project. Yeah. And so far as Mr. Chandi is concerned, you see, though he is now uh, inaugurating project after project and recently, you know, um, uh, the digital Kerala and everything came up. Right. In fact, he has got the uh, nickname yes. uh, Inauguration Chandi. Uh, but uh, the fact also remains that, you see, in terms of delivery, Kerala has over the years in terms of agriculture production, right. you know, it has to import its basic agriculture requirements. Okay. It has become a consumer's market where only money coming from Gulf and abroad that the Keralaites are, you know, consuming and as yes, a result yes. that uh, and the tourism sector, uh, thanks to the prohibition policy, it is also severely affected. So in view of this, certainly people are looking for a change and BJP coming in a big way and that too, please remember, RSS always had a grassroots level presence in okay. Kerala, but it has never translated into votes. With the but, Bharat Dharma but, Janasana, yes, yep. with the uh, you know combination with the influential Ijava community, which mm -hmm. has always been the backbone of the CP. I mean, of the left front. Okay. You know, it is going to change the dynamics. I'm not right. saying that the entire Ijavas are going en bloc yes. uh, uh, with the you know uh, new new outfit. Okay. But certainly, it's going to split them. And similarly, the case with the higher end, you know, the okay. the influential Nair community. Mr. Right. Kumanam Rajasekharan himself comes from that community, okay. and he's also going to sway a big chunk, which earlier used to vote for the Congress. So it is Fair not enough. that only the left is going to be affected, but also uh, you know uh, okay. the Congress. It's all go going to be impacted uh, right. by the emergence of the BJP. Uh, and uh, Mr. Shikhar, the uh, the fact, the aging factor as well of the left, uh, with uh, Mr. Achutanandan at 93, uh, and you know, still uh, c commanding such a lot of support. But uh, really, obviously, the deliverables will be tough at that age, isn't it? Yeah, I, I don't, I don't think uh, uh, the the left will left uh, let. Uh, if the left were to win, I don't think it will be Achutanandan mm -hmm. will be seen. It will be Pinaray Vijayan. But I think the important point is Christians and Muslims together make up 45% of the electorate. Right. And uh, Congress and the left have had traditional supporters in the sense that Congress had support of the Christians mm -hmm. and Muslims because of its alliance with the UML. Yes. And left in Kerala has been seen as a Hindu party because it has been getting the support of the Arabs. Okay. And th this is the general thing it has. Here with the entry of BJP, as Mr. Suresh pointed out, this has disturbed how the you know the community will be looking at okay. uh, these uh, you know choices and also six months ago congress was looking fairly comfortable and could be in a position to accept this jinx cycle you know where okay. the party doesn't get a second term but right. suddenly there's uh, emergence of scams like the solar yes. scam 
that has severely affected Chandi and Congress today doesn't have a face because okay. unless you know Congress decide the last minute they will bring back A. K. Anthony okay. or somebody else to take on the left. Right. Let's move on uh, uh, to uh, Tamil Nadu and Puducherry. But before that, uh, let's take a short commercial break. You're watching Janadesh. Only Tham ke jisne chalna sikhaya, kari mehnat karke humko padhaya, hamari khushiyon ko apni khushi banaya. Zindagi ke har sukh dukh mein jo ek saaya ban kar saath rahe, dhalti umr mein inhe akela na chode. ध्यान रखें माता पिता एवं वरिष्ठ नागरिक भरण पोषण एवं कल्याण अधिनियम 2007 के तहत माता पिता की देखभाल करना हमारा कर्तव्य है और उनको बेसहारा छोड़ना एक दंडनीय अपराध है सामाजिक न्याय और अधिकारिता मंत्रालय भारत सरकार द्वारा जनहित में जारी बहुत बहुत बधाई हो आपने अपने बच्चों को पोलियो ऐसी बचा लिया लेकिन जब तक दुनिया में पोलियो का एक भी केस है पोलियो का खतरा बना हुआ है इसीलिए अब सरकार देश में पोलियो इंजेक्शन की शुरुआत कर रही है ताकि आपके बच्चे को मिले डबल सुरक्षा अब अपने एक साल से छोटे बच्चे को टीकाकरण सत्र में पोलियो की तीसरी खुराक के साथ जरूर दिलवाएं पोलियो का इंजेक्शन क्यों राधा इससे क्या होगा पता है ना हाँ दीदी पोलियो से डबल सुरक्षा हमेशा के लिए याद रहे पोलियो की तीसरी खुराक के साथ जरूर दिलवाए पोलियो का इंजेक्शन अधिक जानकारी के लिए अपने पास के स्वास्थ्य केंद्र ए या आशा दीदी से संपर्क करें तुमने कहा था पैसे दोगे? अंजू ये चोट कैसे लगी वो बाथरूम में पैर फिसल गया था छुपाने से कुछ सॉल्व नहीं होगा अंजू ये सब आखिर कब तक हाँ कभी मायके से पैसे मंगाओ तो कभी लड़की पैदा हुई इसका ताना मैं करूँ भी तो क्या नहीं था छोड़ना मेरे घर की बात है ये तुम्हारी इज्जत की बात है अपने पति के घर में इज्जत से रह पाना तुम्हारा हक है और वो जो कर रहा है गैर कानूनी है इसकी कंप्लेन करना जरूरी है डरो मत डोमेस्टिक वायलेंस एक्ट के तहत तुम्हारे पति को पहले वार्निंग दी जाएगी और एक प्रोटेक्शन ऑफिसर भी अपॉइंट होगा जो उसके बर्ताव पर निगरानी रखेगा इसमें काउंसलिंग इमरजेंसी में शेल्टर होम और मेडिकल की सुविधा भी है फिर भी हालात नहीं सुधरे तो घरेलू हिंसा अधिनियम 2005 के अंतर्गत आप निकटतम पुलिस स्टेशन में कम्प्लेन कर सकते हैं अगर सुनवाई नहीं होती है तो राष्ट्रीय महिला आयोग की मदद भी ले सकते हैं घर के अंदर होने वाले जुल्म को छिपाओ मत बल्कि आवाज उठाओ Welcome back and finally let's take a look at the second biggest state that's going to the polls, Tamil Nadu and also let's club the union territory of Puducherry with it that's affected pretty much by Tamil Nadu politics. Here's a report. Tamil Nadu with a strength of 235 members has the largest number of assembly seats in southern parts of the country. Tamil cinema has played a vital role in Dravidian politics in Tamil Nadu. Five out of seven chief ministers from Dravidian parties were actively involved in Tamil cinema. And like South Indian cinema, the political landscape in the state has everything ranging from action thriller, drama to suspense. Dravidian majors AIA DMK and DMK have remained arch rivals for years. The state has been ruled successively either by AIA DMK or DMK. In an effort to change the dynamics of the political equation, political parties are busy these days in forging alliances with other parties in the state. Congress and DMK have recently announced they are coming together three years after parting ways. Interestingly, despite its alliance with Congress, the DMK led by 91-year-old Karunanidhi is still to overcome its internal differences following the expulsion of Karunanidhi's son, Alagiri, from DMK. Likewise, BJP continues its search for smaller parties for alliance. Political stalwarts like DMTAK leader Vijay Kant, PMK Chief Ministerial Candidate Anbumani Ramadas, MDMK leader Vaiko, all are busy in setting new political equations for upcoming polls. Thus, the election scenario in Tamil Nadu looks set for multi-cornered contest. Successive governments in the state have spent crores of rupees on freebie schemes like laptops, Amma baby care kit and household appliances. It will be interesting to see if political parties will succeed in wooing the voters with such schemes or not. Besides, corruption is another issue that will also determine who wins the polls. In a semi election in 2011, the AIA DMK had registered landslide victory, while in 2014 Lok Sabha elections, Jailalitha's party won 37 of 39 Lok Sabha seats. 
In 2016, much is at stake for Chief Minister Jalalitha to retain power. Will voters prefer to elect Jalalitha as Chief Minister for fourth time, or will there be a change of guard in the capital Chennai? Only time will tell. Like Kerala and Tamil Nadu, the polling in Puducherry too will be held in a single phase on 16th May. N. Rangaswamy, elected from Tatanachapi, is the Chief Minister of Puducherry and is known for his simple lifestyle. In 2011, the two-time Chief Minister and ex-Congress leader N. Rangaswamy floated a new political party named All India NR Congress and won 15 seats in the 30-member assembly in 2011 polls. Like Delhi, Puducherry is one of the two union territories that is entitled to have an elected legislative assembly and and a cabinet of ministers, thereby conveying partial statehood. Key issues that seems to have set the tone for the elections in this union territory include development, employment to youth and the issue of full statehood to Puducherry. Besides, alleged land scam may also cause problems for Rangaswamy-led government. Election Desk, DD News. Well, uh, let's go across to Aisha Khanam. Uh, first, Aisha, tell us about uh, Tamil Nadu. Uh, what would you think are the major issues on the ground there? Uh, Tell us briefly. Uh, yes, absolutely, Mark. Like we saw in the story, Tamil Nadu election is a ma major mega blockbuster. And we see all elements of uh, uh, the Tamil Nadu film industry in these elections. And here, uh, on one hand, DMK uh, Patriarch uh, Karunanidhi is uh, scripting uh, uh, the election and trying to, uh, uh, scripting the election story and trying to, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, trying to get back uh, uh, to the uh, seat of power. And on the other hand, we have uh, Jayalalitha, uh, who, who, who is hopeful full of uh, retaining power uh, once again. But Tamil Nadu, uh, we have seen the trend uh, where uh, the power is uh, uh, most, uh, uh, mostly uh, all, uh, uh, power is shared between uh, DMK right, and uh, uh, DMK alternately. And here uh, uh, with the entry of uh, Vijay Khan, this is a major factor uh, that is likely to emerge uh, as, a, um, uh, 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 as an alternative uh, in the Tamil Nadu elections. Election. So therefore, we might have to wait till May 19th to see the climax of this mega blockbuster elections in Tamil Nadu. So you say Vijay Kant is an important factor in Tamil Nadu, but uh, tell us uh, the situation in Puducherry very briefly. Uh, Mr. Rangaswamy there uh, tied up uh, with the NDA. Uh, yes, uh, Mark, the, uh, in Puducherry, uh, it's, it's a very uh, close fight uh, between AI and NRC and uh, uh, the Congress. And uh, at the moment, it looks like uh, the decision uh, by uh, AI and NRC to go with NDA seem to be playing in his favor uh, because uh, he has, uh, uh, since uh, this is a union ter territory, they have to depend on the uh, central government and they, f uh, they have to depend on the uh, party which is in the center. Yes, Therefore, okay. uh, it is uh, very likely that uh, this the deal will be sealed and it uh, and there could right. be a direct uh, fight between uh, ANRC, uh, NDA and uh, also uh, against uh, uh, the Congress uh, in uh, Pondicherry. Thank you very much, Aisha Khanam, for joining us. Uh, uh, well, Mr. Shekhar, uh, in Tamil Nadu, uh, would you think the electorate is looking uh, beyond the Karunanidhi Jaya Lalita era because, you know, they've been ruling for quite some time between themselves under musical chairs? But I don't think it is this time. Probably, if there could have been an alternative face, an alternative, that po possibility. But could there have are been lots there. of other leaders who have been building up, I mean, based but, on but caste based But what has happened politics. this time is the first, you have what are the options before the people? You have what is now being built as 2G alliance. You have DMK and Congress back, mm -hmm. and with the same old face, Karnadinthi. And they were hoping to rope in Vijay Khan, but that hasn't happened. Right. If Vijay Khan had probably joined them, that would have look like some kind of an option coming mm -hmm. because Vijay Kant has his own uh, uh, you know uh, votes right. and then you have a, a people's welfare front which is led by Vico. Okay. Vico and uh, left parties have formed a line. But Jayalalitha's last five years with the kind of scheme she has brought whether it is Amma Canteen or Amma mm -hmm. Medicine or Amma uh, Child Care so sure. many things I think uh, it's quite a tough We've, we've, run short of time. we've run short of time, but uh, very quickly about uh, the populist measures actually and the way Tamil Nadu uh, politics functions on it. I think I totally agree with uh, uh, Shekhar uh, that you see uh, this time around, one, there are no serious corruption charges uh, at least in this regime under, uh, you know, Jailalitha. I think that she has learned her lessons, uh, you know. And secondly, uh, you see, initially there was a charge that, you know, the government was perhaps not prepared for the floods. Uh, but after that, 
I think she went into a damage control mode and she did a lot of, right. uh, you know, post flood right. rehabilitation work. That has also endeared her. And uh, uh, above all, the kind of, you know, the uh, amma even for cement, even okay. for providing, you know, basic facilities to even building a house, I think that has gone down well with the electorate. Okay. And they don't see an alternative leader because the uh, DMK has uh, projected. Sure. Uh, Karunanidhi of all the uh, people. So I don't think They're that's an inspiring alternative that you know they have given. Okay, we leave it there. Thank you very much, gentlemen, thank for you. being with us here in the studio. And thank you very much, uh, Sevati, Anibrato, and Aisha for joining us. Uh, you've been watching Janadesh. Thank you very much for your time. Namaskar. अभी जो नई पीढ़ी है